can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I was trying to set it up on the AirPods, but I think I'm just going to turn it off. Yeah, I, uh, I, this is the first, I'm experimenting. Um, I usually talk into my uh, webcam, but I, I'm hooking up the mic. Can you hear me with this? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Fine. Awesome. Cool. We have Christina Ma. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you. And uh, we have a lot to talk about. I know uh, I want to eventually end it and uh, promote Ant and Christina's YouTube channel featuring Enzo <laughs> and Leah or Leia? Leia, like Princess Leia. Leia and Enzo, two fantastic kids, cute as hell. <laughs> um, how, let's go back to the beginning. Like, where are you originally from? And like, where'd you grow up? What, what area? Uh, I'm from the L LA area. I was born and raised out here. Mm -hmm. uh, in Almani most of my life. Say that again. I grew up in Almani most of my life. Is that near Rosemead? Yeah, it's uh, right next to Rosemead. Okay, I used to wrestle. There was a tough, there was a tough kid from Rosemead, Michael Calamara. This was back in the nineties, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that was he was a, he was a tough cat. Um, so did you um, what was what high school? I went to Arroyo. Oh, I know about Arroyo. Yeah. <laughs> Is it a Royal Canyon or Grande? Arroyo high school. Huh? A Royal High School. Were you got hold up, hold up? Were you guys like? Dark purple and white, or blue and white, oh, we, we or were gray, black and gold. Oh wait, no. You know what? I got my elementary mixed up. We were blue and white. Blue, I black. Said bl I said blue, right? Didn't I? Yeah, you did. You know how I remember? Because I've I've wrestled guys from your high school. Oh really? Did you win? There was uh fifty <laughs> fifty. There's uh there's some tough Latinos. Okay, yeah. Is that your high school? school yeah mm -hmm. i mean this dude had a full-on mustache in and, high school yeah <laughs> like full, like he was a man yeah yeah a lot that's of the your, guys are really fast out there that's your high school <laughs> that is my high school All right. so well because <laughs> this dude was pretty hood he was a pretty he was pretty gangster on the wrestling mat did you grow up around some uh little tough some tough kids around there a lot. There are a bunch of them. There are a bunch of like cholos that were out there. Even I though knew it. The good side. There's. There I told you. I knew. Yeah. I know them all about. I wrestled them. I've. Uh, I've. They. They've. They've. Uh, we've. Uh, like locked up. You know. Yeah, you can't forget those experiences. No. Right? No. <laughs> no. So did like, cause like, you right now in your life, you have like your kind of like a storybook, just a nice family life with your kids and aunt. So do people know about, cause that, that was, you kind of grew up a little rough, huh? Yeah. I had a feeling you're going to ask me about my childhood too. Oh but... yeah. I always start with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's really crazy. Cause like when I got into YouTube, um, it was, I never even thought I would get into it, but like it started happening when I was trying to start like building a family and it like got way past the whole like crazy lifestyle that I used to have. And like, all the wild times that I had before. So like everyone that sees me now on YouTube, on social media, they're like, oh, she's this like innocent mom. She's so like caring and they just know me as a mom, but like no one really knows like how I grew up and everything. So when they hear these stories about me, like they're really surprised. Yeah, so did you go through your like phases of like attire? Like were you, were you wearing like, did you have the whole um, chola, oh. like the makeup and the Cortezes and all that? Yeah, around our time, you know, the like Sharpie eyebrows that was in, like, yeah, shaving your eyebrows, filling it in, and it looked like a permanent marker. But yeah, I did that. I used to wear like the super bright colors. I used to like match my laces, wear Adidas Cortez to like match with my outfits. Yeah, that. Yeah, the initial belt. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so, um, so was this in the 90s? This was 90s, early 2000s. Oh, okay. I get it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So did you, did they try to like, who are you kind of hanging with back then? Were there like little like crews and clicks and stuff? So I guess in a Royal, it was like majority, I would say it was like about 90, 95% Hispanic. And then you have the Asians and then there were like the innocent Asians or the full Asians. And 
it was so funny because like we used to have this wall where like all the Asians used to hang out and they used to call it the Great Wall of China. <laughs> oh, that's pretty racist, but Very yeah. Racist. Yeah, yeah. Was like, okay. But you know, that was like, that was where we used to hang out and stuff. And um, around the time that I was going into high school, um, there was like this huge riot that happened in Royal too, where it was like Hispanics and Asians. And it was just uh -oh. this crazy, yeah. It was right before I came in, but there's just this whole thing that happened. But like, for the most part, um, I would say it was like majority Hispanics and Asians that were out there. I hung out with the Asian crowd, but I was very diverse. Like I hung out with everyone. I was in mm -hmm. a lot of like sports and I was in clubs and I was just kind of like, I was the type of person that was like hanging out with everyone pretty much. Right, were there, um, so what were the Asian, did they have the um, slick back? Slick back hair. The, the jail, the yeah. White hair with the highlights on the top. Yeah. <laughs> the blonde I, highlights. Your husband, like I was, I was checking it. Like even his hairstyle reminds me of like, um, <laughs> like nineties, like nineties, you know, like, like nice and clean and shiny fade, like a shiny fade. And everything. Yeah. So yeah. I know he has this look, like he has this tough guy look and he looks like a bad guy or whatever, whatever people yeah. want to say. But he's actually really, he's really innocent. His heart is pure. He's a and sweet, is he's a sweetheart, isn't he? He is, he is. Yeah. So um, what are, like, how did you, uh, did you meet Ant in high school? No, no. So the funny thing is um, I met him at a bar. I used to be a bartender. Okay. Yeah, yeah so um, I was bartending there. And usually I have this rule where I'm like, okay, I'm a bartender. Guys are going to try to talk to me. Girls will try to talk to me, whatever it is. Oh, yeah. I my number out to anyone because they're just there for one thing. Yeah. But with him, um, backstory is that I knew, uh, we had mutual friends and I used to hear a lot of things about him. And I heard that he was like this really sweet, nice guy. And, you know, at that time he was with someone who just kind of took him for granted. Yeah. So, yeah. And um, after that, like, since I kind of knew about him, my friend introduced me to him and I was like, okay, well, like, I know you're this sweet guy and stuff. So I started talking to him and then I gave him my number and it, nice. It, it there. And now you guys have a family together. Yeah. Now we have <laughs> That's <two crazy>. kids. <laughs> um, what's your ethnicity? I didn't know. Uh, I like asking that. What, what's your guys' ethnicities? Uh, we're Chinese. That's what's up. Have you, have you guys been to China? Uh, he has, I haven't, I have not been there. You have no, no have, have you thought about maybe going in the, I know it's crazy right now with the quarantine yeah. and COVID, but uh, do, uh, one day, do you plan on going there with your kids and to visiting the motherland? I would love to. Like, we've always wanted to. I think we even wanted to this year, but COVID happened and everything else. So it's just mm -hmm. kind of Yeah. Like, as, I think once things settle down and then once the kids are like, okay, and they're old enough where we don't mm -hmm. have to watch them 24 seven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have family there in China? Uh, we don't. We don't. You don't? No. So aunt's Chinese too? Yes. Were there Asian like gangs in, around your area? Uh, there were you said a lot. Asians too, yeah. There were a lot during our times. Um, I feel like that's when it was like at its peak. So like Asian boys and stuff like that? Yeah, there's like Asian boys watching. Um... So the, weren't they beefing? Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not around that. Like, although I'm into like hip hop culture, uh, yeah. ironically, I was raised around mostly white people in a oh. small town in San Diego. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Huge difference. Huge difference. Yeah. Like typically, cause my girlfriend, she lives in like an Asian community. You know what I mean? She like more towards, uh, you know, West Covina, a, a Walnut area Okay. and all that. So the way she grew up and the way I grew up are different. She was used to being around like Asian community. So she was around the Asian community. Yeah. Like Boba spots, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? dumpling spots but yeah. me, i was it, it's like me and my brother we didn't have that but then i my eyes opened up once i started wrestling and traveling to different high schools and competing against different high schools and i realized even our neighboring san diego uh mount carmel it was mostly asian it was mostly filipino Pinoy, oh, Pinoy. yeah and so i i just wanted to bring that up because but but i'm fascinated because i'm into hip-hop culture and skateboarding and all that yeah. and so I'm I'm kind of fascinated with the whole the Asian, you know, like the gangs and all like uh, just the subcultures and everything. Yeah, um, I feel like Aunt and I, even though we didn't know each other back in high school, like that was what we kind of grew up in mm -hmm. kind of the lifestyle that you're a part of. 
Um, and I felt like that's where, like we were surrounded by it at that time. And, you know, you couldn't go anywhere without um, other people like hitting you up or like if I'm hanging out with other guys, like there are always these other guys who are just hanging out at like a boba shop. And um, we're just trying to go there to get boba. And of course, like they always have to hit up the guys that I'm with and they always like want to ask them like where they're from, like what yeah. they, things like that. And it's just kind of crazy. Like that was the norm back then. So the, so typically they would say, where are you from? Pretty much. Yeah. And then then what? How do you because I figure what there's no right response, right? <laughs> yeah. You just basically say, like, I'm not from anywhere or the terms were um, I don't bang. Right. OK. <laughs> Amazing, yeah. What if you were a tagger? But you look like you're kind of in a a gang like how would you answer can you could you just back then say you write or something I don't know you know back then I felt like there weren't really too many people that were just tagging just to tag I felt like people who were tagging were from somewhere probably yeah and then there there that's no different because then weren't there like tag banger like like kind of tag crews yeah there were there is I guess, right? I guess there were but I didn't really like know any of them so. yeah yeah, I don't really know. So they would hang out at boba shops? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that was like the thing to do. People would just like stand in front of the store, then they would just be hanging out. Yeah. Um, not drinking boba. They're just like hanging out. I think their whole purpose was like to just, I guess, hit up people too. Right. Yeah, like they just had nothing else to do, I guess. But that so what what set them aside from your your like typical normal asian did, like a tattoo or kind of colors they're wearing or like how would you distinguish them from others people well i mean there were the the crips and the bloods right that was like, uh, obviously because the colors yeah. yeah 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 but other than that i don't really know because i know a lot a lot of asians were just like um wearing a lot of like bright colors it was a lot of the red it was a lot of the yellow a lot yeah, of I would say since they're Asian, shouldn't they rock yellow like bandanas? <laughs> uh, they did a lot. But those, I guess those were more of the neutral people, the people were, who weren't from anywhere, but yeah. they're proud to be Asian. So, yeah. So the, would... you're really safe if you like wore pink. Yeah, pretty much. Like if I were back then wore a pink bandana in a pink uh, T-shirt, I could just say I'm from the pinkies or something. I guess so. I mean, they might look at you and think you're a little, funny. a little, yeah, they would think <laughs> I'm a weirdo from somewhere. Right. Or so. can I say I'm from a dance crew? You could. Yeah. Because I know back then there was probably B-boy crews. I think, yeah, there were, there were. And I think they left those like crews alone too. Cause they weren't like affiliated with anything. So, so if, if I grew up in your high school back then, I would probably get into the, uh, try to learn how to break. Probably. I think so. I think you would have been safe with that. So at El Monte, oh, is that not El, 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 El Royal, right? Mm -hmm. At El Royal, like during lunch break, let's go back in a time machine. Okay. If you were, were there during lunch, were there, it was like segregated, right? You had your break, day, the B-boys, like, I guess by the picnic tables and they would be practicing. Then you'd have this wall and then the jocks and then the bit, you know, was it like that? Uh, I would say yes. Yeah. I feel like almost every high school was like that, though. Am I right. wrong? Was your high school like no, that? No, even with my high school, they, well, because well, since I was mostly around white people, there was like the surfer wall where all the oh, surfers okay. hung out and then the cheer, the cheerleaders over here, then the nerds. Yeah. 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 It was for us, too. I'm sorry. I just I get fascinated. I like, uh, you know, I like talking about this stuff because it's like, you know, I, I, I like learning about like, you know, where how other people grew up. So how did you when did you grow out of that? Um, I would say I kind of grew out of it um, probably like a little bit outside of high school. I'd probably say like after my first first or second year of high school, because once you get out of high school, it's so different. Like there's no cliques. There's no groups like people aren't segregated or you know in their own groups, yeah right? yeah you kind of learn to like diversify and like um mix up with a lot of like different groups and stuff like in college so yeah yeah so did you decide to what uh, to go to community college or university or state college like what happened there so um after high school I went to Cal Poly Pomona 
Oh, what's up, Pomona? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I wanted to go to a Cal State for sure. I mm -hmm. was in universities, uh, four state universities, or I mean, four year universities. Mm -hmm. Um, but I went in there original originally. I wanted to um go into like dance. I wanted to be an arts major, performing yeah. arts major. Yeah. But then, you know, coming from like an Asian family, I told myself like, okay, well, what can I do with that? Like, where can I see myself going? Is it going to be like a steady career for me? And um, eventually I was just like, okay, you know, I need to think for my family. I need to think for my future. And somehow I got into like HR. Okay. Resources. Yeah. Human resources. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know that I actually got into it because I, I didn't know what else to do. Cause I'm the first person in my family um, to graduate from college. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank wow. you. Wow. So you yeah. grew up with siblings, brothers and sisters. Yeah. And I'm the third, third oldest. So, okay. Yeah. So I had two older brothers. Um, they didn't graduate college, so <clears> they didn't really, they couldn't really guide me, I guess, into what I wanted to do in um, college. So yeah, I into it. I was just like, all right, let me look at this curriculum. Let me see what major requires like the least amount of uh, units to graduate. And then I just kind of got into HR. So that's crazy. Yeah. And I was very naive going into it because I said, you know, I, I want to get into HR because I want to help people. I want to find jobs for people. And I just yeah. want a person that people can come to. You want to be of service to. Yes. Yes. To I other people. To, yeah. Basically. There ain't, there ain't nothing wrong with that. There ain't nothing yeah. wrong. Yeah. I mean, going into it, I was just like, oh, wow, it's it's just completely different from what I thought it would be. Right. And then because it's so weird now, because now it's like back then there was no like content creators or right editing video. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So isn't yeah. that a trip now that like because I spent a lot of years at Arizona State. I didn't oh. know what the hell I was doing. I was mostly doing drugs. Oh, <laughs> yeah. See, that's the thing. I feel like depending on what high school you go to, like the experience there is so different from college because you feel like you know everything when you're in high school and you feel like they're really preparing you for college. But once you go in there, you're like, what am I doing? Like, what am I here for? Like all the counselors you talk to and everything that you kind of study, you're just like, oh, yeah, it goes out the window. Yeah, pretty much. You, you have to learn everything pretty much on your own or if you have like older siblings. That oh, yeah. 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 You but, know, this is another thing. In high school, you think those people are your friends for life. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. But then I I met a whole new group of homies and people like in in mostly in college. I I keep yeah. more in touch with people in from college. I think. I yeah. Think so. Because when you're in college, you're like your mentality is at a different level. You guys have like the same and similar goals now. Because when you're in high school, everything kind of changes, right? You're just yeah kind of like. Yeah, it's more like that's like the homecoming king and those are the popular people. But in college, you're you're trying to figure it out together. Like, what are we doing? And you're trying yeah. to figure out what you want to do, your life, yeah. your long term goals, your careers. And I think, yeah, friendships last more. So did you um, so um, from HR, did you so you got your degree and then when did you start doing content creating? And then meeting like the JK people and Jojo and um, Gina and Gio and all them. Okay. So um, I, I would say it was probably like five. Let me see. We're in 2020. I met them. Um, I want to say like six years ago, probably. And um, I met Anne in 2012. Yep. Yep. So, um, after that, I'm trying to think back because it's been so long now but i actually knew joe first i knew joe before i knew anyone else we oh know, you knew you knew jojo before aunt yeah i knew him before aunt and knew him at a completely separate time too and it's it's so funny because like we we're just talking about this like not too long ago we're talking about how we all like knew the same groups of people back so in the weird day, yeah we all hung out with them at different times so it's kind of Wait. like we're kind of connected but it wasn't so jojo went to arroyo also he didn't go to arroyo but like we knew a lot of people Oh, like we, right. Yeah. Yeah. Friends and stuff. Even Bart, like Bart was around back then too. Bart. I don't think so. I didn't know Bart back then, but yeah. I know Joe met Bart like later on um, after like high school too. 
You know, it's weird. All those people you mentioned have done the podcast. Like JoJo actually brought his whole gun collection here. Oh, really? I'm not surprised. It was like a two part <laughs> series. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. He has a huge collection. He's got a grip of guns. <laughs> better to be patient. Yeah. So, um, so, and then, so what, what out of the whole group? So what, what girls did you get along first? And cause you, cause they ended up, they're big on like YouTube and content yeah. and stuff. Like, did you meet Tiffany or Nikki? Like who did you get along with first? And yeah, uh, I think, um, I met them because they were like doing a skit at like Ant's old liquor store. That was like one of the first businesses that he had. Right. Right. <laughs> And they reached out to him because initially Joe and Ant were supposed to, um, I guess they wanted to start like a restaurant or a food business. And they were like meeting with each other. And then eventually like that didn't happen, but then they wanted to do a skit with him. And that's kind of like how the relationship started to build. Oh. Yeah. And then the first time that I actually met the girls, I met um, Gio, Julia, and Tiff first. And I met them when we went to Hawaii. So oh, you guys went out there to vlog or something? Uh, we, I guess for them, they went out there to vlog and then um, they invited Ant and I just to go there because we started like talking to them more. We started hanging out with Joe. Yeah. So I wanted to like bring us along with them. Um, and that's like how everything started because for them, the norm was them like vlogging. They were vlogging the entire trip. Everyone had their GoPros and their cameras out. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that, uh, you know them a lot better than I do, but I noticed when, uh, when I when I when it was over at JK, Bart was always like in the in the habit of like even before they started filming JK, he was like vlogging himself with his camera, and yeah. then and then a light bulb went out, and I they they're really inspiring because like I learned a lot like oh you need to be like constantly thinking about the next thing, pretty and, much. Well, because you too, right? Because now you are naturally doing that with um with your channel, right? Aunt and Christina and your kids. And then like, did you, did you get the same kind of experience from watching them? Yeah. So like, um, going back to that trip, like everyone just kept vlogging and Aunt and I were the only ones that weren't vlogging. So we we're just like, okay, we feel like the outcast. Like yep, yep. We're the only ones who aren't holding a camera, we're not vlogging. So then after that, like we just kind of got inspired and we started, we got our own equipment and we started to just vlog, like to vlog our traveling experiences because we went to like Japan and everything with them too. Yeah. So, yeah. Like just seeing them always um, vlogging and they're just always coming up with like content, like right away. Always. Like, second nature to them. So it was kind of crazy for us to see. And then how did you learn? Like, did you have to ask them what camera or lenses or editing pro, like, how'd you learn all that? Yeah, I think, um, and he was doing a lot of that. Like we were kind of just uh, observing and seeing how everyone was vlogging. But when it came to like equipment, um, and would ask the guys and they would ask them like, oh, what, what's better? What should I get? Should I get this GoPro? Should I get this mic for it or this camera? And I, even till this day, like they're always talking about like upgrading because you always have to upgrade your equipment. You always got to find things. Oh my God, you do, better. don't you? Yeah, always. You know what I realized with, um, cause I had a gimbal um, camera. Mm -hmm. But then I realized uh, the, 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 if you have a newer iPhone, it, it, the quality is kind of like the same or even, yeah. Yeah, you, you notice that? The, the picture video quality is pretty good, but then I guess the sound isn't as great. So that's why we don't, we don't use the iPhone. Um, so well, how do you, cause your, your stuff, cause I was watching some of your videos um, with your kids and aunt, uh, how, what, what, what kind of gear are you guys using? We're actually using a GoPro right now. What? Yeah, because that for that, it has like a built-in gimbal, so you don't really have to buy one. Before, you would have to get one to attach to it to kind of like stabilize everything, but now it kind of does it for you. So, really? Yeah, and it's a lot lighter. We used to carry this huge camera. We would get this mic with a cover on it. It was like this big. Yeah. It, it was just so heavy to carry all the time. So like the GoPro is just what we've been using. And it's How, been what, about, what about audio quality? Uh, does it, do you record something separate or does it capture all on the GoPro? It captures everything on the GoPro. Really? Yeah. Surprise. Damn, me. <laughs> that's crazy. How much, how much are GoPro? I mean, they sell them everywhere, huh? Like Target, you yeah. can go to Target. I don't remember, but I would say maybe this one, it was probably like two to $300. So it's not too bad. Right, not right, too bad. right, right, right. Because we've and had cameras where it would be like 800 to 1,000 too. 
Damn. And because you're using it all the time, you're using it every day, it kind of just burns out too. So that's why we kind of went the GoPro route. That's crazy. Yeah. Is now like if you were like to go just to like um, to reflect on like your experiences, like never in a million years would you think that like, oh, I could, you know, make money and income just filming my life. Like what what are your thoughts on that? Isn't it? I think about I trip out on that. It's really crazy because like when I was really into YouTube before, it was when um, I think like people were doing covers all the time. And that was like the big thing on YouTube. And um, I think that was around the time where like JK was like really getting into it. But they I don't think they blew up just yet at that time. But yeah, were- when do, yeah. Do you, so you remember all that, like when it blew up and like. Yeah, yeah. I remember all the of build that. up. And, you do. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, it'd be so cool if I could ever be in YouTube and like do covers or just like things like that. Cause that's, that, that was what was in. But then um, like, I never thought I would see myself like where I am now. And I never thought that I would be vlogging, starting a family. Like I didn't know that my channel would start out like that. Cause I always told myself like, I would have been good for YouTube before. Cause I had, cause I was younger. I was more enthusiastic. Mm. I had more energy. Like I had that bubbly personality. Cause you need all of that, you know, when you're on YouTube. Cause you're always you Yeah. And I was like, oh, I would have been perfect for it. But like coming into YouTube now, like being this trying to be a mom, like I never saw that happening. Yeah. But but in a way, like because I always trip out on that, too. When I watch other people's content, they're like, hey, guys, same Hamilton, Sammy Hamilton here today. I'm going to be doing it. So anyway, you know, like you don't really have to do that either. You could just be yourself. Right. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Cause I don't do any of that. Like I try to do my version of that. Like I do cooking videos, but now that I think about it, they're not, I didn't even have a kitchen. Oh yeah. It's like more like maybe equivalent to, I've never been to prison, but you know how they talk about prison spreads. Yeah. Yeah. Like my, my, my cooking videos are more like, kind of like ghetto like that. I can't, I I can't imagine what you mean. You cooked without a kitchen. Yeah, I have a hot plate. Uh, I, have a, I have a toaster oven. You know what I mean? I uh, have like yeah. your bare necessities. Gotcha. But you, yeah, so, but the thing is, is people watch it. Yeah, I, I I feel like people kind of just, they feed off of like the the natural vibe now. They kind of just like things to be more realistic rather than the like, hey. Yeah. Hey, I'm doing this and da, 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 da. Like they just kind of want to see it from like a real life perspective nowadays. Like, and, and also I think people are savvy to, they know when you're cutting or editing, they, you know how like the popular YouTubers are always cutting. Yeah. You could tell they're like talking and then cut because then, anyway, cut. blah, 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 cut. Okay. So any, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. I, I kind of don't like that. Yeah. Cause then you always try to, I mean, we were doing that at one point too, cause we we're trying to make it clean and, but then we didn't want it to come off as like being trying to be too perfect. Like we wanted people to know like everything that we're going through, you know, we're going to mess up. We're going to say things where, you know, it might come off the wrong way or people might just perceive things the wrong way. And that happens a lot. Oh yeah. In there anyway, because we want people to know that we're human and we make mistakes. Right now. How do you guys deal? Cause you know, it's a sensitive topic cause your kids are involved. Do you read the comments? We do. We read the comments and we try to respond to all of them too. See, I can learn from that. The only <laughs> problem with me is because there, you know, there is some negative. I know it's probably ninety percent positive, but uh, you know, like, are are there ever negative comments? Of course, of course. And you guys are like, you take it as a constructive criticism. For the most part, we will. Um, we we will go through every comment. Um, sometimes there are just comments, or there's like people who are constantly trying to like belittle us. So they're always trying to um, be negative on like the way that we parent, but you know. Wow, they they even dissect that? Yeah. Oh, once you show parenthood and how you raise your kids online, there are a lot of people who are always gonna give you their opinions because everyone raises their kids differently and they're they're always gonna have their, they're always gonna put their two cents into it. Wow. Yeah, but we do try to take everything as constructive criticism because we know we're not perfect. Right. But no one is. No one is. Yeah. And that's crazy. It's great because we don't even have to um, respond back to them because like some of our viewers and fans, like they'll respond for us because they've been watching our channel for so long. So they kind of know that we're not th- these type of people and they know like 
what we mean when we do something or when we say something. So, right, right. Heavy, you know, I, I just uh, interviewed uh, Gina as well, Gina Darling. Yeah. And uh, I, I was tripping out on like what she does because like she streams on Twitch or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Facebook gaming. Have you thought about getting into doing that? Like if your kids in the future start gaming, will you be open to them like twitching or have you thought about that? I mean, we do think about that because we're pretty much putting our lives on social media now too. And they know, they see the cameras on all the time and mm -hmm. they're always a part of us like filming stuff. So if they want to get into that, like I'm down for them to do whatever they want to do. Like, yeah. Because growing up, you know, with our parents, they're so old fashioned. They're like, oh, I want you to be a doctor. I want you to be a nurse. I want you to like go into medical school. Uh, I want you to be a lawyer, right? But, no, yeah, yeah. I we all grew up with that. Exactly. I and, mean, there there comes a time where, especially when we're talking about Asian parents, uh, they, they, they just have to, you know, throw in the towel. Pretty you much. Know? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like. You know, because uh, I think my mom, even my folks, uh, they, you know, all with all, every Asian, like your typical tiger parents, whatever tiger yeah. parents, <laughs> they, 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 they're gunning for that. But then once they real, what, what resonates more is money, though. That's true. Very you know true. what I'm saying? It like if once they see money or any kind of money, they're like, oh, OK, you're cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause even for me, like, um, it was a hard decision cause I was in HR for a really long time mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. while I got into YouTube, I was an HR manager. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was paid really well. I had good benefits and, mm -hmm. um, I was, I was living very, very comfortably, but then it was just kind of like a, a toxic environment for me. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was just, it was so stressful. I would come home stressed all the time. And, um, you know, being in HR, I don't know if you're like familiar with not that. really, not really. Okay. So mm. basically, um, you're either people are really nice to you or they avoid you completely because they don't really like you. And I don't oh. know what you before they're like, Ooh, stay away from HR. Or don't talk to HR about anything. So there's always this misconception because obviously we work for the company and they know, um, I mean, I guess they know the power that HR has. Yeah. We have the power to write people up. We're pretty Ooh. much, like, yeah, like, ouch, people, disciplining people. Like, we had to do all of that stuff. So, you had a lot of power. Yeah. Um, I would say yes, but it's not that I wanted to do it, but obviously it was just a part of my job. But, um, so, pe so people would report to you, they would they have these reports if there was some unlawfulness or mm -hmm. uh, discrimination or unfair treatment, stuff like that, right? Everything, all of the complaints that people had, all of the disciplining that people wanted mm -hmm. to do, like managers that needed to discipline their employees, but they didn't want to. So they're like, here, Christina, can you do this for me? Because mm -hmm. I don't want to do it. So, so, so you've heard every story in the book, basically. Oh yeah. yeah. And you, you know, so much about everything being in HR too. So it's like, you mm -hmm. have this, you have to be this neutral person all the time, no matter what you hear, no matter what you see and do. You um, can't be biased. You have yeah, to hear, you cannot be biased. You have to hear all sides. Pretty much. Yeah. And I think eventually, like, it just, um, it became too draining because in my own personal life, I try to avoid any negative things. I try to, like, if I don't like something or I don't like how a person is, I would just kind of, like, cut them out of my life. But mm -hmm. being a star and being a professional, you have to, you have to deal with it. And you're dealing with all the problems within the company. So it's yeah. too much negative energy. Yeah. So, so do, don't, do you, do you enjoy what you do now opposed to yeah. HR now? Yeah, isn't, it, isn't it a lot more chill? It's definitely more chill and I'm not stressed out or it's a different kind of stress now because I'm like living for myself. I'm living for my family and I don't have to deal with a lot of like toxic people anymore. So, no, yeah. all you have to do is content, content, content. And it seems to me like y'all are doing fine. Like I just reviewed a lot of your, some of your videos. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a cool video. That's a cool video. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like like the snack review, you know how like you guys are. Uh, eating the, the the rice snack like different yeah. snacks that's something like that's so easy that's like fun and it's fun yeah, yeah. like i right? never thought i would get paid or to make a living off of like 
working with other companies and like getting products and you know like promoting things for people like I never saw myself doing that so it's just so crazy how everything has been so far that's interesting you brought that up so now by you you know what I realized like you're in a whole like different market like because you have kids too so like that that plays into it too right Mm -hmm, for sure so do you have like kids toy companies or people hitting you up now we have some yeah yeah and we'll always like choose companies that make sense with our branding like we'll always have companies that try to reach out to us and they want us to like promote um various things for them but like if it doesn't make sense for our channel and for our audience then we won't promote it so we have to like be very selective with stuff like that. Yeah, um, like like if a hunting gear company hits you up, you, that doesn't really make sense. Yeah, right, right. Like what would make sense? Let's, I, I like to do this exercise. Like what three things? So anything that has to do with kids or uh, maybe uh, pillow cases or, <laughs> or well, I don't know. I'm just trying to come up with stuff. Anything that comes up like relates to like kids or like family or like food because Aunt used to be a chef too. Um, and he's always cooking and making stuff, mm-hmm. always showing yeah. food in our yeah. vlog. Yeah. And so how do you usually, uh, do people hit you up on Instagram or do they hit you up on the comments of YouTube? How Usually how does that work? Uh, through email, through like DMs on YouTube. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, they'll, they'll try to reach out to us any way possible because we make ourselves available like through social media, like everywhere. So yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, we're dude that flew by. Yeah, because these are usually 45 minutes. So it, this one just flew by. I really enjoyed the Arroyo High School. Like I, I, I like that segment as well. <laughs> that was that was fun for me personally. Nice. Um, uh, now, this is the segment, I guess, where I really wanted to uh, plug uh, your YouTube channel, which is uh, called uh, Aunt and Christina. Yes. And so uh, did you want to, uh, can you uh, start uh, maybe throwing out your social uh, or, or any or a website or stuff like that, your social and your YouTube again? Okay, sure. So our YouTube is uh, youtube.com um, backslash Aunt and Christina. And um, you can just search us uh, under Aunt and Christina. A lot of people will search us under like Leia or Enzo too. Can you, can you spell that out for the uh, viewers? Uh, Aunt, A-N-T and Christina, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-A. Mm-hmm. And uh, subscribe today or uh, yeah, definitely subscribe to the channel. And what about, can you, can you say your uh, Instagram as well? Yes, my okay. Instagram, uh, my Instagram handle is xtina402. Uh, mm-hmm. can, can you say that one more time? Cause it's, it's a little different. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, my Instagram handle is xtina4, the letter O, two. Perfect. T-I-N-A, four, O. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> now, do you have a uh, like a collective one. Uh, do you have an Instagram with e- both you and Aunt or the kids or anything? Or uh, we don't. We don't. Okay. Well, we have one for for Aunt. We have one for myself. We have one for Leia. We also have one for Enzo. Can you talk to your husband as well? Do you think he'd be open to uh, maybe d- being a guest on uh, the Steve Rubin yeah. show? Yeah, I'll definitely talk to him for yeah, sure. Just, yeah, because uh, that'd be really fun. You know, you know, he's got a whole different story because the oh cooking, yeah, because the cooking and you know what I mean. He has yeah, a lot yeah. to talk about. So yeah, I'll let him know and I'll tell um, you. Uh, for future reference, I, uh, you know, one thing I didn't want to do, which uh, exercise I wanted to ask is, you know, like all, all, the, you, all your friends, like the girls, I wanted to know how you, your relationship with each one separately, like your relationship with, you know, Gina and then Gio, you know, but we'll do that maybe in a future one. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. That would take a long time. That would take a long time. Yeah. That would yeah, take a long time. But it, no, for me, it would be fun. Cause I just saw you, um, was there either not, not big mood, but not big, big mood girls, but wasn't there a, a YouTube channel called like, Hey bitch or something like that? Yeah. So Hey bitch is what they started with. And that was when Gio was a part of it, but she stepped back to take care of Taika. And then they, they rebranded and changed it to, um, big mood, but I was on both podcasts. Yeah, you're on both. And there's a whole episode of you when you're pregnant and like yeah. you, you guys were talking about pregnancy and all that. Yeah, that was uh, that was a fun one. Yeah. 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 Both, yeah. Really interesting topics. But yeah, it was yeah. 
to it's crazy. I didn't even ask you any kids questions about, you know, I figured just keep it on the content and like your the history with that. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's just so much. To I'm, sh- I'm sure you, t- you already talked a whole bunch about that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's always about the kids. So I was like, Hmm, what are we going to be talking about for this show? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, it flew by, um, that for you, that was easy for you. Right. That was, that was just, yeah, no, it was walk nice. in the park. It was definitely nice to like talk about my upbringing and everything too. It's been a while. I had to really think about it. Yeah. And it's a trip. Cause I, even though I'm from San Diego, I already knew, uh, Arroyo. I already knew your school colors. Yeah. Because I would be wrestling in that, you know, cause you know, every, you know, like the wrestling singlets, Mm-hmm. I knew I knew Rosemead was like maroon and white and black. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And I knew the guy I wrestled in high school had a full on man mustache. Yeah, you would never forget that. And he he yeah. was he was a tough little stallion. Mm-hmm. Little cholo stallion. Yeah. yeah. He was hard. <laughs> it was hard to get in on his legs. Yeah, he was <laughs> tough. So shout out to Arroyo. Was it a Royal Grande? I kind of think it was. Just a Royal High School. Okay, that was some. Yeah. I'm thinking about maybe Canyon or something. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'm thinking of a different high school. Yeah. Um. So that's it. Um. Definitely subscribe to Ant and Christina, right? Yes. Ant and Christina's YouTube channel. So um, thank you for your time. Uh, I'm ahead on schedules, but I'll let you know the week of. And if you want to post on your Instagram to promote as well. Um, I really appreciate your time. Tell, um, tell the kid, tell Enzo and, uh, Leah and aunt, I said, hello. Okay. And definitely, um, how often are you uploading your YouTube videos? Uh, we upload three times a week. What? Yeah. Oh, um, I need to up my game. <laughs> three videos a week. Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Whoa. At 12 PM. So Did you learn that? Cause I, I kind of like learn that from JK. Did you kind of get inspired by that in a way? Cause they upload a lot too. Oh, they upload almost every day. That's yeah. Yeah. It's kind of tough with the pandemic right now. Yeah. I'm so. trying different types of content too. Like I'm doing war zone content now, or I want to. Yeah. So three times a week. That's really good. I think that's a healthy amount. Yes, for sure. We wanted to do more, but, uh, it was kind of tough. So and you are pre- uh, you are approaching a hundred thousand. You guys are up to like seventy five to eighty thousand subscribers. Around there, we we still got a way to go, but that's our goal. You guys are gonna get there for sure Thank if you, you just well, keep. Congratulations to you! I saw. That I year. know it took a lot. It, three. It took a. It, but you know, this is going back to consistency. I didn't. We didn't right. talk about that, but I just. The only advice I have or what I learned from JK or everyone is, dude, you have to do it consistently on the same day. People will just get used to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because me, I think I would have got there a little sooner. I was just doing one video a week. Uh, Okay. So you're not even like in the algorithm too. Yeah. Yeah. But now I'm like, oh, like I got to do at least two. Yeah. And YouTube's always changing the algorithm. So you always try to have to like work around it. So yeah, but, 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 but then this is great because people who watch my stuff is going to be like a familiar with your guys' stuff. You know what I mean? So yeah, this is how it works, you know? So thanks again. Yeah. We, we surpassed the 45 minutes, Christina Ma. Yes. And aunt and aunt and Christina support it today. Subscribe today. Okay. And you're free to go and uh, tell the kids. I said, hi, tell your husband and I said, hi. And uh, thank you so much. Well, have a good okay. day. Okay. Peace. All thank right. you. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to stay on here to do other uh, <laughs> announcements. Okay. Thank you. Okay. There you go. Christina Ma. That was fun. I love talking about the high school stuff. And uh, I wanted, we have a Patreon attached to the show the newest patrons are freddie d leon dio dio jeans matthew hamilton and Kayvon batty if you want to uh check out the patreon it's patreon.com slash stevie weeby where's my cheat sheet here um i gotta do it by memory um 
Uh, there is a website if you want to get any kind of uh, merch. I just know that the uh, shipping will be delayed because of uh, uh, COVID. It's stevieweebyshow.com. The Instagram is Instagram slash Q-U-A-N-G-O-U. All my music is at stevieweebybandcamp.com. Um, I'm almost close to finishing my concept album that's going to be entitled I Feel Stir Crazy inspired by the 80s movie starring Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder called Stir Crazy. Um, and that, I'm close, okay? I'm close. Um, there is no Little Ray's World uh, this week because, but I heard, I heard it through the grapevine that he might be making some appearances and cameos on the Stir Crazy album. Stay tuned for that. We do have a P.O. box attached. I'm doing this again. I don't know why I always do this. It's just a habit now. Okay. Uh, send uh, send uh, any fan mail or packages to P.O. Box uh, for uh, Stevie Weeby Show at 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, P.O. Box 1391, L.A., California, 90093. Again, if you haven't done it yet, uh, subscribe to... Uh, Aunt and Christina's channel, Aunt and Christina on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm also, I, I didn't mean to talk your ear off, but I'm um, starting to, uh, I, I got the Elgato working. I finally figured it out. So now you're going to probably be seeing more Warzone uh, gaming content. People seem to like it, even though uh, I'm horrible at Warzone. I'm below average a lot i'm a below average player but look i'm i i don't care i think people are not tuning in for my skill they're tuning in for our commentary and the fun that we have playing warzone um love y'all thanks for tuning in till next time peace